Okay, so we are gonna look at a problem dealing with drag, and I'm gonna pull that problem up. Okay, it says a 560 gram squirrel with a surface area of 144 square centimeters falls from a tree to the ground. <clears throat> Estimate the terminal velocity of the squirrel, and we're gonna use the coefficient, the drag coefficient for a horizontal skydiver in our problem. And what will be also the velocity of a 56 gram or kilogram, sorry, 56 kilogram person if they fell from that same tree. So in the problem, the tree reads that it's five meters above the ground. And we'll need to know that, of course, for part B. So let's just write down what we know about the problem. We have the object that we're interested in looking at, the drag coefficient of, or excuse me, the drag forces of, is that squirrel. I actually have no idea how to spell the word, word squirrel. Two R's, one L. That's how you spell the word, word squirrel. All right, two R's, one L. Perfect. All right, so that's our object. Now, we want to remember that this the squirrel is going to reach terminal velocity. We're trying to determine what is the terminal velocity of this squirrel. So we're going to have to know a couple of things. We have to appreciate that if I'm looking at the case of terminal velocity, what does that tell me? Well, we're falling through the air, so we have a couple forces acting on this squirrel. We have the force of gravity. That's between the squirrel. I'm just going to do that so I don't have to spell that word anymore. And the earth. And we have the drag force, so the air resistance. We'll call that the force of the drag. That's between the squirrel and the air. We also need to remind ourselves that the drag force is equal to one half the drag coefficient. And remember, in this problem, we're told to use the drag coefficient for a horizontal skydiver times the density of the fluid that the object is falling through, times the area, times the speed of that object squared. So it's dependent on the density, how thick the material is that the object is falling through, its, its uh, surface area, and that drag coefficient, and how fast it's going. All right, so as a little reminder of that, there is a uh, short mini lecture on air resistance, and it kind of talks you through some of those components and why it's dependent on those variables. Okay, so let's draw a free body diagram of this squirrel. So we have the force of gravity of the squirrel going down, and we have the drag force going in the opposite direction. <clears throat> and if I'm at terminal velocity, terminal velocity, well, that means that I'm not changing my velocity. If I'm not changing my velocity, then I'm not having any acceleration. And if I don't have any acceleration, I don't have a net force. And if I don't have a net force, that must mean my up forces equal my down forces. So in this situation, the force of drag has to equal the force of gravity. So when the object is in terminal velocity, the weight of that object is equal to the, the drag force. So let's set that relationship up. We have the drag force, which is one half C times rho times the area times the velocity squared has to equal the force of gravity, which we know is equal to mg. And we're interested in how fast the object is going at this point. What is its terminal velocity? So I'm gonna solve for V, I'm gonna bring that two over, as well as the coefficient of drag, the density, and the area, and then end up with V squared is equal to two mg all over C times rho times the area. And then if I take the square root of both sides, I get that the speed is two mg over C rho times the area, all under that square root. All right, so what are my values? We know that the mass of the squirrel is 560 grams, so 0 0.0560. Gravity, of course, is 9.8. 
The drag coefficient for a horizontal skydiver, that's equal to one. You have to look that up. We're gonna use the density of air in our atmosphere, so that's 1.2. And we're given that the area of the squirrel is 144 cubic centimeters. But if we're gonna use this drag coefficient, we have to convert that to cubic meters. So when we convert 144 cubic centimeters to cubic meters, we get 0.0144 cubic meters. All right, so just as a reminder, one, two, two divisions by 100 there. So if I take all of that under the square root, I get a terminal velocity of about 25 meters per second. So the terminal velocity of this squirrel is 25 meters per second. Now we're told that that squirrel jumps off of a five meter high tree. And we wanna know well, what would be the situation for a, a gentleman jumping off a high, uh, five meter high tree. And we're gonna ignore air resistance in this case. Short distance, heavy mass, we can ignore air resistance. We're gonna see what if we ignore the drag coefficient, what is the velocity of a person that jumps down five meters? I'm gonna keep this up here and I'm gonna erase this side of the board so that we can do the kinematics problem looking at that part B. All right, so the first part really just using the drag coefficient relationship, making sure we understand what does it mean to be at terminal velocity, doing that quick force analysis to remind us what it means to be at terminal velocity. Now let's compare this to a person falling out of that tree. Well, in this case, oh, we don't have our squirrel anymore. That's for the other part. Okay. All right, in this case, our object is the person. I believe it says a man is jumping down that tree. And so here's the tree branch. And I'm gonna call the ground my position equal to zero. So there he's falling to the ground. So we do our kinematics process, V position initial and final, speed initial and final, acceleration, and time. So what corresponds to our initial condition? Well, that's when he falls leaves the branch. And what corresponds to our final position? Well, that's when he hits the ground. All right, so where does he start? He starts where he falls, that's at the branch, that's at five meters. Where does he end? That's at the ground. He's falling off that branch, so his initial velocity is gonna be zero meters per second. We don't know how fast he's going when he hits the ground. The acceleration, well, if we're ignoring the drag coefficient, the acceleration is free fall. So 9.8 meters per second squared, and we don't know how long it takes. Now we were interested in comparing this terminal velocity to how fast the person would be going. So we're interested in that final velocity. So we look through our tools, our equations, we can find that this relationship, V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus two A delta X is gonna be the one that serves us the best. So V final squared is equal to V initial squared, which is zero, plus two times negative 9.8 times five, my, negative zero minus five, so negative five. So V final squared, I can solve for V final by taking the square root of that right hand side and we find that V final is equal to about 9.9 .9 meters per second. Now the problem said of a 98 kilogram man, 59 kilogram man, I forgot what it said, 56 kilogram person. Did I even use that information in this problem? 
Now, this is a kinematics problem. If I am ignoring the shape of that person and ignoring drag, and therefore the net force is acting on that person, then that acceleration is going to be that of free fall. So it didn't matter how big that person was. Now we're supposed to compare this to the squirrel. If the squirrel reaches, it takes the squirrel to get to 25 meters per second for it to reach terminal velocity. But if I ignore that and I'm only at a situation of V final being 9.9 .9 meters per second. So in the absence of air, that squirrel would have been going 9.9 .9 meters per second when it hits the ground. We want to compare that to its terminal velocity, which is 25 meters per second. All right, that's what the second half of the problem says. Compare those two values. Okay, so reminder of kinematics, using that drag coefficient idea. Good job.